right, Oval fans, uh, yeah, you're getting a review pretty early this week. And uh, I did have a good time live tweeting. Watch the episode live. I tweeted. That's why I say, guys, if you haven't done so, make sure you follow me on social media. Links are in the description. And let's try to get this video to at least 50 likes. I know that might seem a bit low. It's like, well, Jeremy, you asked Eve you Loving Use Wrong videos to get to like 100 likes, 250 likes. Why only, you know, 50 likes on this one? To be honest, I had more fun live tweeting than watching the episode. Um, this one was kind of a stinker. Um, really didn't do anything for me. I mean, it kind of dragged on in a lot of places, so... Just wanted to throw that out there, and if you watched it live with the commercials, then I feel like you understand where I'm coming from. So, we pretty much picked up where he left off. Donald is choking Lily until he gets to the point where he realizes, I can't do it. I, 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 I can't do it. So, he lets go of her, and at this point, you know, Lily's freaking out, lost her shoes in the scuffle, and is trying to come to grips, no pun intended, with what happened just now um i love you baby i, I love you you, 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 you please come back and she's literally and i gotta give props to the acting in this scene it was actually pretty good um you know while lily is still trying to fathom what just happened between her and donald donald's trying to explain you know you you, you can't go to police you you can't leave look I, I love you. And I'm thinking to myself, well, love, nothing says love like strangling someone, right? You can't have a, if you haven't strangled, what, what's that saying? If you haven't thought about killing your partner once, are you really in a truly strong relationship? I don't know who says that, but I'm pretty sure somebody does. But in any case, um, she eventually crawls to like the other part of the room and then leaves like she crawls down the steps while Donald is following her saying you you can't go Lily you, you can't if you go if you tell you you're going to die because I wanted to take care of it to save you from what they would do to you so it's like yeah it's basically kill or be ki well no it's not kill or be killed it's essentially either I can do the killing or they can do the killing but my way of doing it would have been much more gentle so in any case she tries to get to the door. Donald stops her. She tries to fight back, but it gets to the point where she's had enough and she had and she does hear out Donald and he's talking basically crazy like, look, you got to stay with me. We got to look like a like a good couple and I have to have kids because I'm next in line to become the president. And I'm like, interesting. So, Donald, I Guess that means once Hunter's term is up, you're next in line to be president. Look, look I need the money, and we, we have to be like a family unit, and this and that. I'm thinking, okay, uh, Donald's talking nonsense. I mean, I need to go back and rewatch the scene, to be honest, but from the gibberish I gathered, he did mention the five powerful families that run things from like oil companies to pharmaceutical stuff. Just basically the ins and out of the country are ran by these five families. Sadly, we didn't get any name drops as to who these families could be because I was really thinking that, ooh, what if one of them is Malone? However, we don't know. All we know is Victoria's family is one of the five, but that's all we know. So it basically gets to the point where Lily has the choice as to whether or not she'll leave, but he just keeps saying, look, if you go to the precinct, if you, precinct, if you go to the cops, whoever, tell them what you know, specifically when it comes to the president, they will make you disappear like you won't come back so go out for that drive get some air but please come back and lily leaves and with no shoes i know that's a weird thing to harp on i'm not a foot guy but it's just one of those things where she probably has an extra pair in her car which wouldn't surprise me so lily leaves and donald's just you know <sighs> oh she comes back so we go over to gail and gene in the kitchen uh Gail brings up how she was in the trunk of her car, overheard her talking with her boyfriend, Greg. Apparently, I think Greg and Priscilla, well, actually, Priscilla and now um, Gail brought up the fact that Greg uh, apparently broke her heart. So, Gene must be going through something terrible right now. Well, even uh, Kyle brought it up, what was it, last week or the week before last in regards to, so how's your boyfriend doing? So, in any case, um, she overheard the fact that Gene was talking about her brother being a perv and her mom being a bitch, even though um, they, she isn't supposed to talk about 
any you know the first family to anyone especially those outside of the walls of the white house so when i thought this was just going to be gail once again blackmailing someone into doing what she wanted saying i'll make you lose your job and it's like Jean and lily at this point both could care less but um she's basically asking look is there any way you can find out about picky you know my boyfriend whether or not he's dead just please ask around and it's only because she overheard Jean saying that she felt sorry for gail so i'm like in a way this was one of the rare moments or the first moments where gail wasn't a total bitch to the white house staff even though she called Jean a bitch after their conversation so then we go over to hunter and kyle um hunter is going to bed and they talk he thanks him about the the thing we can't talk about in reference to Denise and long story short of this weird scene, you know, Kyle has a recommendation of how to make Hunter feel better. It's like, you know, I had a friend one time, you know, I had to help fulfill his needs and yeah, we all know what needs he's talking about. And did you see his face light up when Hunter's like, no, um, Kyle, um, I'm not interested in getting another woman and Hunter's like, I mean, Kyle's like, hmm, but it wasn't like that. So, yeah, that that was the end of that conversation. There's literally no need to go into it anymore. But we go over to the hospital. Richard is all right. He, they say that in about an hour, he'll be out of surgery and he'll be able to have uh, visitors. Nancy goes off about Barry. And I'm like, again, like, Nancy, Nancy, I mean, Barry might have an explosive or a range of emotions he must get that from his mother because of the fact that i just hate the fact that she i get that she's grieving but this is not the first time always assuming the worst about barry and i mean priscilla calms her down like look we need to focus on the good richard's going to be okay so let's just focus on that then we go back to the pharmacy kareem and sharon are finishing up you know cleaning up the place uh boarding up the supplies so nobody tries to steal it and um they're both talking about how it's a long day and Sharon's like, let's, you know, take some value in the back to relax. And it's like, cause at first I'm like, is Kareem bringing up the fact that he does, you know, drug selling on the side because he kept talking about how, man, you know what? We can't shut down. We can't afford to do it because this place is barely making ends meet. And I'm thinking if he really is a drug dealer, is money something that's not in the question? Because like he said, can't get high on your own supply. Again, is it a nod to him actually being a drug dealer like Picky said? Or is this something we just don't know about? But they end up going to the back. Um, and one of the most interesting things is the fact that he brings up Barry and the fact that, look, people are saying that, um, and he kept saying they, but he wouldn't say who they is to Sharon. Like, they say he killed uh, Ruth and then, do you think he really would have killed me? Because, I mean, I don't know. Did you ever expect him to do anything like this, driving a truck through the entrance of the uh, pharmacy? Which makes sense. Like, even if the place gets fixed up, Kareem's always going to be looking at that front like a truck coming in to get him. And that actually makes sense. All right, so we go over to Gail and Jason, and they're just chilling on the couches. Gail is eating ice cream, and Jason is seeking things, searching things online. Apparently, he has his father's secret wi-fi code trying to find out how much porn he likes and stuff like that which is weird uh hunter gets to his room and j just checks things over to make sure how clean things are he lifts the rugs notice the blood and freaks out right when victoria comes in and she is pissed trying to find out more intel on denise and what exactly is going on hunter warns her not to and before he can even take a shower to go to bed i'm thinking to myself well, for Hunter's sake, he better hope there's no broken glass in the shower. Like the last time he went in there after he and Veronica got into a Victoria got into a fight. He goes to check on Jason because she demanded it and they have a little talk. And we basically once again see Creeper Jason in full effect. He's saying that he he's seen Denise every time she came to the White House. And did you see her today? Yeah. How did you see her when you weren't here? And no, guys, I don't think Jason was the one that killed Denise, but he saw her come in. I don't know how, but this is Jason we're talking about. And he's like, are you spying on me? No, I always lie to you. And I'm thinking to myself, well, is he lying to you now, Hunter? But basically after uh, Hunter leaves the room, he tells Kyle to keep an eye on Jason because he's spying on him. He's like, no, sir, that can't be it. We do sweeps every day. And I'm thinking to myself at this point, who I think Jason and Kyle might get along. I'm not saying they would do stuff together. You know what I mean? But honestly, I feel like they would get along just fine with their creepy ways. But to be honest, for Jason to get past Secret Service and all all the time, 
he might be even creepier than uh, Kyle. And I believe that. So after that, we go to Kyle going over to Donald's place. And he just keeps telling Donald not to worry about his wife. The fact that he's keeping tabs on him. He knows Donald, able, Donald wasn't able to get the job done. But Lily had been circling the local precinct a multiple number of times. And if they if if she makes a move, then they're going to have to make a move as well and take her out. Donald said, no, she's going to come back here. And um, Kyle goes upstairs, make me growl. And I'm like, oh, gosh. So in any case, uh, Lily's sitting outside a precinct. Donald actually makes a phone call, but she's ignoring it and then calls Bobby instead. Tells Bobby what happened in regards to almost being killed. And Bobby pretty much says what Donald's saying. Look, if you go in there, they got people that work in there. You will die. So what you need to do, come see me ASAP. Lo and behold, Lily's paranoid because people are following her. Sam comes up to the window because he recognizes her. And she freaks out. Oh, no, no, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. But remember, Sam isn't following her. Sam is just there to check on Barry. He just so happened to get to the local precinct right when Lily was there. So Lily drives off to go to Bobby. And let's see here. Yeah, Sam goes in there, talks to Jake, and mentions the fact that, okay, well, Barry wasn't on any drugs. He was clean and wants to figure out exactly why Barry did what he did. Brings up the fact that growing up, he was a good student. He was an honor student. He never got involved with gangs or the wrong crowd. He was clean. So Barry comes in, and Barry and uh, Sam talk one-on-one. -on -one. Richard's okay. And they talk about the situation. It's like, okay, you didn't blank out because you remember exactly what happened when it came to your rage. And that was an interesting topic of the episode where Nancy brought it up and then Sam, then Jake. But we really never get a pinpoint on why Barry did what he did. And like, well, did you black out and kill Ruth without thinking, remembering it? But that wasn't the case. The, the mystery of the knife is still there for I don't know how long, but we'll find out eventually, I guess, because even Kareem brought up the knife thing or the murder of Ruth and Sharon's like, no, he, he wouldn't do anything like that. So Kyle, who is naked, is in bed, tells Donald to calm down. The fact that I want to just congratulate you on a good job. And look, I got my radio right here and I'll know if Lily makes a move. And if so, then we'll, then I'll make a move, but I want to help you de-stress. And, um, she, he sees that she's going south, meaning that, you know, she's not going to the precinct. She's not coming home tonight either, because remember, she's going to see Bobby. Now, keep in mind, for people who feel uncomfortable watching this kind of stuff, I did what I said in my other video. I just simply turned my head and Donald and Kyle did what they did. I just know I wasn't looking at the screen. So we go over to Barry being brought back to his cell. Uh, there's a dude from the hood that he knows in the cell right next to him. An interesting conversation where they don't say much because, you know, eyes and ears everywhere in the precinct. But he lets them know that Picky's dead. He lets them know Denise is dead. But he calls bull crap on that story about her being a prostitute and child trafficking because she knows that it, he knows that isn't the truth. What he does know is the fact that things just aren't right. I mean, the White House, you need to be careful around there, Barry. It's like, what, the first daughter that girl came around the uh, Piggy's turf and then we, then he ended up dead? Then the first lady went to see Denise at the boutique and then she winds up dead? Something ain't right. As soon as I get up out of here, I'm going far away. So Barry's just thinking, like, what the hell is going on? Because, I mean, it's one thing to worry about your dad who you saw got shot. Then you get the news that, okay, thank goodness he's okay. But then you get inside the jail cell you find out your cousin's dead and then the sister to your baby mama is dead as well and then we go over to bobby and lily bobby was looking out the window for lily to show up like i would on the doordash order or an amazon package lily comes in and bobby pretty much knows that something isn't right lily knows something major if she's almost been killed and she's being followed remember she well she thinks she overheard or knows about the president killing someone but Bobby knows if it was something smaller that she had gotten into, they wouldn't be hounding her the way they are now. But long story short, at the end of the day, he gives her the advice to go back to that life with Donald, at least until he, at least until she gets some form of dirt on him in order to use that to get out of the life. So basically, you got to play the game, get some dirt. That way you can walk out on your own because everyone has dirt they don't want to have exposed to everyone else. And then the final scene, we have Victoria getting in bed, drops her grandmother's earrings. Hunter's just freaking out. No, 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 get the maids to do it. And then she reaches over, grabs them, and then notices blood. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, not much to talk about in the episode. I honestly don't even know 
how many or if I'll do any oval breakdown videos because again this episode wasn't really much to talk about um I give it like a six out of ten honestly I kind of feel that's a high score in itself but we did get a few interesting points it's almost like the show there were many points of the episode where I felt like we were leading to something like again touching on Barry's rage and you know picky and stuff like that but we really never went anywhere with it of course we got kind of set up where Gail wanted Gene to find out stuff and then you know um Barry I mean hell picky's probably alive because you know he thought that Roof was dead hence why he identified the body and then we know for a fact he'll find Roof eventually now if picky isn't dead where is he I do not know so, with that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you think of the episode? What parts stood out to you? Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon. As I said at the beginning of the video, follow me on social media. Links are in the description. My Twitter's there as well. Now, I can't guarantee I'm going to be live tweeting every week, but I figured I was wide awake tonight and might as well watch. But to be honest, this was an episode where even if I didn't watch it live, I wouldn't have minded because it was kind of stale in some places. Uh, shout out to the patrons over on Patreon. You can join in for as little as $1 a month for content there you won't get here on YouTube. And also, if you want to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App.